Hi, this is Jeff Blair with Schneider Electric. I'll provide a brief overview of radar beam angles. When you look at the market today, I see three primary uh, frequencies of radar. Uh, 10 gigahertz, 24 gigahertz, and 80 gigahertz. And these gigahertz may fluctuate um, a little bit each way. 77 gigahertz I've seen, uh, 26 gigahertz, uh, 8 to 12 gigahertz, things like that. But these are just for general purposes, three different uh, frequencies of radar. What's inter interesting about radar is um, the lower the frequency, the wider the beam. So I'll show you the, the extremes here. So a 10 gigahertz, a typical 10 gigahertz radar with a three inch horn would have a 32 degree beam angle. Why that's important is you get a nice wide coverage, but it can also pick up what we could, would consider false echoes. Now every radar I'm aware of on the market can actually blank out obstacles. So if you see my crudely drawn thermal wells here protruding into the tank, this radar might project its beam and it might say, hey, at this height, I see an obstacle, this thermal well. And at this height, I see an obstacle with thermal well. And then I also see the actual liquid level we're trying to measure. What, what you as a, a user could do is tell the radar, ignore this, that's not the level, that's a thermal well. And ignore this, that's a thermal well, that's not the level. And the radar goes on and it says, okay, I'm gonna ignore these two signals, uh, reflections I get from these. And, and you go on your way. So when you get to a 24 gigahertz, we notice that the beam gets a little smaller. Remember, the lower the frequency, the wider the beam. So as we get down to a much higher frequency, we're gonna see a smaller beam. But here at 24, we're kinda of in the middle. So we've got a three inch drop antenna on this one, a nine degree beam angle. And the same size tank, same dimensions. It's gonna miss the thermal well completely. Doesn't touch it. Same thing here at the bottom. And this is just a just an example, but it's going to say, "Up, oh, I see a level here. There's a thermal well, and I actually see the liquid level." So you don't want to measure the thermal well as your level. So you, again, you go back just like we did with the 10 gigahertz. You program the radar to say, "When you see this thermal well, ignore it. I don't want that to register as level. No problem." When we get to the 80 gigahertz, this is one of the benefits of the higher frequency. We have a higher frequency. We have a much smaller beam angle it doesn't even see the thermal wells. So you don't have to worry about blanking them out or telling the radar to ignore the, the, the echoes it, it may see at these levels. So again, we just eliminated the problem. We don't have to worry about false levels from obstacles that the beam may see because the beam is, is nice and narrow. A lot of, if you take a look at the three we saw, 32 degree, a nine degree, and a four degree. Well, I'll show you, we can actually use a calculator to figure out how big that beam's gonna be. So if you go to the web and you search for a radar beam angle and width calculator, you can find a variety of things. And this particular one, I will show you, uh, the easiest thing to do is, is let it load and then download it so you can work offline. And once you've downloaded it, you'll notice you can plug in different heights in here. So let's go with the 75 feet down here and you can see different variations as to how big that beam will actually be. Beam size width in feet uh, from a two inch NPT antenna, 26.4 feet wide to the uh, 24 gigahertz, six inch drop antenna, 5.2. And you know, so a little over five feet for a, um, a two and three quarter inch lens antenna from an 80 gigahertz radar. So back to the, if you remember the, the nozzle and the valve we looked at, we could actually figure out if we plugged in 75 feet and we wanted to go with the most narrow beam we could find that would be an 80 gigahertz with the two and three quarter inch lens. We've got our four degree beam angle. So it's 75 feet all the way at the bottom of the tank. If you remember, uh, if we had 5.2 here, we could see 5.2 feet. That's how big that beam's gonna be at the bottom of the tank. 
at 50% high, it's going to be 2.62 feet. At 80% high, it's going to be just a little over a foot. Um, so you can actually use these radar beam angle calculators to figure out how big the beam's going to be. Is it going to intersect um, a thermal well, a baffle, a heating coil, some other obstacle or internal obstacle that may be in the tank? And you can envision how big the beam's going to be and where it's going to go. So I hope this was uh, beneficial. I appreciate you spending a few minutes trying to learn about radar beam angles and why they're important. Thanks very much.